right. Um, so we've got a question from a viewer. Let's start with uh, you, uh, Senator Bigham. Uh, this viewer is all in favor of uh, comprehensive statewide paid family and medical leave and wants to know uh, whether or not that's something the legislature will be pushing this year. I sure hope so. Um, it, it uh, you know, it's the right thing to do. Uh, a lot of companies are offering it. Um, you know, when people's people get sick and the loved ones get sick, um, it, you just need to be able to take the the time to to do that. And so I really hope so. This seems to to I think be a, a discussion that would be ripe for having the chamber come in and and other folks and having a good conversation about. Um, doing the right thing on this. And so I, I hope we do get to this this year. Uh, I know that the governor is certainly pushing for it. Uh, I, and uh, I know that the House certainly uh, has, uh, and the Senate, have both members in there that are very vocal about it. So I hope we um, get, a, get a chance to vote uh, yes on this. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you know, paid family medical leave is one thing to, to dictate to our, our businesses about what they need to offer for benefits and that. Uh, my concern with it is, what's it going to do to wages? What's it going to do to employment? Are we going to be able to, to keep our employment levels up? Are we going to continue to see our wages grow? Uh, that's my concern with it right now. Uh, and then we hear about productivity. And as you have these paid family medical leaves, how many more employees are going to need to be hired in order to get the same work done or the same uh, production out of, out of uh, what we've had? And so I'm just really concerned that we're going to start seeing a reduction in, in wages. Their wage growth is going to slow or stop pretty much. Um, other benefits may get cut. Uh, I'm just really concerned about it. We need, we need to have the discussion uh, passing something this session. I don't know if it'll, get, if it'll go through this session, but we do need to have that discussion. I, I hear a lot from local governments, small police departments, and other entities that are concerned because they have, in greater Minnesota, it's hard to find people and a substitution. I think we need to look at what kind of um, mitigating programs we might have. If it's law enforcement, maybe we have a training or a, a rotational pool of people that can go and substitute. Um, I had My mother-in-law worked labor and delivery, and when she re retired, Sort of the bridge was she would go f around and cover for maternity to leave, mm -hmm. and she would spend. And that was it was amazing the the quantity and the need. Um, you know, we might have to look at how do we prevent some of these interruptions. Um, you know, with it. Mm -hmm. So no matter how good any bill is, there's usually some unintended consequences, and I think we really need to look at. Uh, mitigating those, so I think further discussion is needed before we, you know, go ahead. Well, the bill is moving through the House, and uh, the DFL are highly supported, mm -hmm. um, so it'll come to the floor and we'll debate it. I hope the Senate will have the same opportunity, but other countries are doing this. We're well behind other developed countries. We're a wealthy nation. It's about time. And it is a benefit to employees, and when we have a very low unemployment rate, a lot of employers are already offering this, mm -hmm. and I think it would benefit everyone to have the same opportunity. But, but not the t 12 weeks. And in committee, we heard discussion about, uh, and I think it was from the, the counties, they offer um, a benefit, and they would not be able to get credit for what they cover and so for part of it, they'd be double paying uh, because you'd have this entire different program. And so there are some of the things that we really need to uh, you know, look at the details and iron out um, and avoid you know, some issues. 